Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. Well, I just dropped my great grandson off at the nursery and usually I would go walk. But I'm gonna go back to the house cause we got all this fog right here and we'll do some foggy fire making. I have not taken my mask off yet, just, just for effect. All right, I hurried home so that I could uh, work in this fog before it lifts, but according to the weather forecast, when this fog lifts, we're going to start having rain for the next couple of days. So the table's got a heavy layer of dew on it. So the smartest thing to do when you have to try to make fire in 100% in humidity is to not expose your tinder to the humidity any more than you have to. Not expose, of course, your char cloth. You need to get your char cloth in and out of your container as quickly as possible. You don't want to, you don't want all this char cloth to absorb all that moisture. So let's go ahead and start off with ferro rod and let's ignite three piles of tinder. Oh, I didn't tell you about this. Here's the four foot uh, spindle that we'll be using, horseweed spindle. I don't know if you can see it. We'll do it right on that stump right over here. And once again, this spindle doesn't need to be out in this humidity, but uh, I think I can overcome it, especially since my materials are so unnaturally dry. This would really add a lot of difficulty if you was getting on the spot materials out of nature with the moisture content that was already in them and then trying to deal with this humidity, it'd really be hard. But I want to get you up closer and maybe get some good, since we got low lighting, this is a good opportunity to get some good slow-mos of some of these, like the ferrite and the flint and steel. So hopefully that'll work out for us. I didn't mean to rub this across that wet table. I like to open it up a little bit like a donut for when I'm gonna ferro rod. Let me get you closer. All right, I'm gonna be using my keychain ferro rod. And I did have a nice, pretty symmetrical point on there. Nice and shiny at one point. But uh, in one of my videos that I never even ended up posting, I drug this point across a piece of concrete to make sparks to ignite char cloth. And so it was successful, but that video wasn't. I never posted it. And that's why I have such a mangled up point on my keychain fair rod. And we're gonna be using the Stanley 10-049 with a really good sharp spine. Let's see if we can get some slow mows out of this. All right, some flint and steel. Oh, 
I don't have my shirt out here. Hold on. All right. There's a good close-up of what we're using today. This is a steel that I made out of a Nicholson file. You'll find that video in the description. And here's our good sharp chert. We broke off some good sharp edges in yesterday's video. And here's a piece of char cloth that I've already got torn in half to expose all those good threads. Let's see how this looks in slow motion. You might think this is a waste of heat to spread that ember all the way across the char cloth before you use it, but indeed it is not. Watch how quickly the flames come now. Oh, here's a piece of t-shirt material. It still has the seam right there. I rarely use t-shirt material. I'm always using denim. Still, you want to tear it and try to expose some threads. Find a good sharp edge on your shirt and put the char cloth just behind that edge. So you see all this humidity has very little effect on ferro rod and flint and steel because like I say, all my materials are, are kept dry all the time. But then don't you think Oatsy, the caveman, don't you think he, he kept all of his fire making materials nice and dry also? Let's see if we can ignite this in one breath because we took the time to spread this, the ember all the way across the char cloth. One more time. This is another piece of t-shirt material. Tear it in half, exposing all of these threads, but then I like to line them up directly on top of one another. Go just behind that very sharp edge We're gonna do what seems like we're wasting a bunch of heat. We're gonna spread that ember all the way across the char cloth before we go to use it. We should be able to ignite this to flames in one breath. Even in all this humidity.
You don't have to stop blowing on a tinder bundle just because you see a few flames pop up. You can continue to uh, blow on it and really establish it, really get them flames uh, burning well before you stop. All right, let's, let's get set up over here on the stump. All right. Horseweed on tulip poplar, pinning the fireboard with a knife. My second go at a very long spindle. Now we're down to about three feet. Going for the burn in. Oh yeah, got good smoke, but that's not very dark down there. I'm gonna go ahead and keep on going with it. A little bit more, even though I had decent smoke. Smoke. That's better. I like the looks of the bottom of that divot now. And we will not save that dust. All right, here's the divot we just got the two fails out of. Pretty much used it up, didn't we? And this is the one we're gonna use now with a shorter spindle and a bigger diameter at the hot end, at the tip. I just feel like we can make it happen even though we're in 100% humidity. Here's my ember catch. Huh. Now that I'm up the hill and the spindle's a little bit shorter, I can get my palms up over the, the top of the spindle and bear down harder. Smoke.
I saw before I stopped it, it was ignited. The difference was I took out some of the flex and made it shorter to where I could bear down harder on it. And I got the ignition in all this humidity. I don't know how much of the first fail I'm gonna show you on this because people hate to spend time. I don't understand how if you're trying to learn hand drill or these fire making techniques, why you would skip through a video. But most people don't watch my video, my videos in totality. They skip right through them. The fails, the fails that I did are very important of the uh in the learning process. Can't get the leaf. Can't get under the leaf. This should have gone to flames. It's the humidity. All right, y'all. It's time for me to go hit that walking trail before it starts to rain on me. I appreciate you joining me on this one wheel. Catch you on the next one.